Hey everyone, welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. My name is Steve and I am a drone pilot. And this morning, on this beautiful morning, I'm out here with the Zod Drift. Now the Zod Drift is supposed to be a glider, from what I understand. And it has a little spot in the front where you can put an FPV camera if you want to put goggles on and fly it around. You can see on the back, there's a pusher prop. Now the cool thing about this plane is it's not very expensive and it's easy to put together. So how about watch my video of me assembling it and then come back out to me in the field and we're gonna fly this. First, let me show you what you get in the box if you buy this plane. First off, this would be the box. Inside the box, you receive the main fuselage and this is where you would place an FPV camera. A brushless motor is already installed and it can handle a 2S or 3S LiPo battery. The main wings have a very modern electric connector so that there are no messy cables or wires. Under the main forward hatch is where you would place your battery as well as your FPV camera system. Under the rear bottom hatch is where your elevator servo is. You'll need to access this to install the elevator connector rod. And speaking of the elevator connector rod, here it is. It's housed in a very strong carbon fiber tube. Other items in the box include your horizontal stabilizer as well as your main wings left and right. You'll note that each wing has a very modern quick connect, quick disconnect electric connector. You also receive two props. Use the two bladed prop with a 2S battery and use the three bladed prop with a 3S battery. A wing spar, thumb screws and Velcro attachments are also included. And of course you get a sheet of Zod stickers. No instructions are included with this Zod. You have to find them online so just watch this assembly instruction and you'll know what to do. First remove the bottom hatch so that you can access the elevator servo. Next take the carbon fiber tube that has the elevator control rod in it and stick it in the rear of the fuselage until it goes over top of the elevator servo. Then simply push the hook on that control arm into the middle hole of the servo arm. Then lock the carbon fiber tube in place and you should notice the control rod is sticking out the rear end of the plane. Next take your horizontal stabilizer and slide it onto the rear of the plane. Take one of the included thumb screws, place it in the hole at the rear and lock everything in place. Next connect that control rod to the control horn that's on the elevator. To attach the main wings, first you must insert the wing spar through the fuselage, then put the wings over top of it. Use one of the included thumb screws to lock the wings into place. Next, you're gonna need a receiver that's compatible with the radio you're gonna use. I'm using a six channel AR620 by Spectrum because I'm using a Spectrum radio. There is a tiny spot in between the wings where you can place your receiver. The plane can fly on a 2S or 3S battery with a capacity of 400 milliamp hours all the way up to 1500 milliamp hours. Once your receiver is installed and bound to your radio, check your control surfaces. For my flight, I'm using a 2S battery, so so therefore, I'm using the two-bladed prop. So right in the front is where you would put your FPV camera, but uh, I don't have any extra FPV cameras, so I don't have one in there. So I just have a battery sitting up front and I have some foam so the battery doesn't flop around. I do have some weight in there as if there was an FPV camera because you need some weight on the nose to bring the nose down. So I have it all balanced out and I'll just plug in the battery and we'll take it for a flight. Now the great thing with this Zod is they put these little markers here and here. Those are your CG points, so check this out. If I put my fingers on the CG points with my battery and weight in the front, it looks like it's balanced nicely, so it should fly nice. So now before we go fly, let's check our surfaces. So ailerons, there we go. I'm going to put in low rates so I don't flip it upside down. And your elevator in the back. That's all you got for surface areas. And of course you have your motor. Timer, 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 stop. There we go. So to fly this beast, it's just a matter of tossing it. So I'm going to toss it this timer, way. Stop, timer, stop, timer, timer, stop. I'm not going to give it too much throttle because I want to see if it really glides. So here we go. Timer, start. I think I got the CG correct. Give it a little bit of throttle. It seems to glide nice. Bring it around. I'm going to bring it at me over here. There we go. I'm going to take it up. I'll give it a little bit more throttle. Time remaining. Four and minutes. now I'm going to turn into a glider. So here we go. Power Timer off. Stop. Does it glide? Seems to. Yeah, there's no power going on, no throttle, nothing. It's just a prop turning in the wind. So let me bring it back, put a camera on the nose. Timer stop. And going down. Nice landing. Doink. 
So according to the CG, I had everything balanced perfectly, but I did have it going up and down doing that. I call it porpoising or whatever it's doing, this sort of thing. You could get it to go pretty stable, but every now and then it wanted to go up and down. So not really sure if I have the balance exactly correct. Perhaps their CG marks are a little bit off. So I might make it a little bit more nose heavy. So now I'm gonna stick a little camera on an Insta360 GO 2. So the camera is on the front. Test out the CG. Little nose heavy is what I want. Let's see if it even flies. So by putting the camera on the front, it's kind of simulating as if I was flying with FPV goggles. Although if you flew this with FPV goggles and you put an FPV system in the front, it fly really high. With this Insta360 GO 2 camera on the front, I'm not gonna fly super high because I wanna keep it in view of this camera on my head. So let's see, is this camera working? It should pick me up. Hello, Insta360 GO 2, you should be recording me. Timer, timer stop. All right, beautiful summer morning. Please fly, don't crash into the ground. It's a little wet out here. The plane's kind of wet, so that adds some more weight to it, but uh, here timer we go. Start. There we go. Well, it seems to fly even better with that camera front. Right now I've just got a two-bladed prop and uh, a 2S battery. And that's pretty much all you get when you do that. I don't know if I could take it up higher. Let's go up a little higher. I don't want to get it too much out of the perspective of my GoPro. Right into the sun, blinding me. It likes the weight of the camera up front on the nose. So you got some shots of the rising sun as we're flying here. I'll try to bring it back towards me. Looks pretty cool. It's very quiet. Coming back at me. There we go. Whoa. I'm doing kamikaze flying now because I've got it going way too fast. Here, I'll slow it down. <laughs> it does. When you go super fast, it wants to do kamikaze dive bobs. Here we go. What I mean, watch. No. So this is a fun plane to fly. Is it for beginners? Yeah, it's 100% for beginners. But at the same time, you need a little bit of knowledge of how to hook up a receiver and of course have a radio and everything else. But if you can do that, well then, it's probably pretty decent because for the price, if you put an FPV camera in it, you can have a lot of fun flying around your field. Here, I'm coming right at me. One minute. There you go. <laughs> okay. I don't know what the flight time on this is either because I have a two cell 400. There we go. 20 seconds. My radio is saying I'm almost out of power, but the radio doesn't know what the battery is in here, so I don't think that uh, is accurate. Come back, Eddie. Right, let's bring her down and land it. And there we go. Okay, reducing throttle. So she's got to come down. I'll try to get aiming at me. Reducing throttle. Timer stop. Well, now it's going over in the other field. I don't want that. But oh well, <laughs> that's where she goes. There we go. How is that? The camera is soaking wet. So that's it. That was my review of the Zod Drift. There's not much I can show you on this. It is designed to put an FPV camera in the front, which I did not have any, or else I would have been flying it with goggles. But I will say, had I put an FPV camera in the front, I then probably would have put a 3S battery in it, as well as the three-bladed prop, because on the 2S battery and the two-bladed prop that's at the back, it has power, but I don't think it has enough power to have a lot of fun. So I think if you want to have a lot of fun, you need 3S and the three-bladed prop. But if you're a casual flyer, like I'm, sometimes I'm a casual flyer. I like to come out in the early mornings, as you can see here, or the late evenings to fly a plane. This is perfect for that. And if you're going to do that, then it's probably perfect to just fly it on a 2S battery and the two-bladed prop because it's very smooth flying and it's very casual flying. It's a lot of fun. Anyways, links to this product are below. Banggood sent this to me, so you can go check it on the Banggood website, but I'm sure it's available all over the world on many sites because it is a Zod product and Zod is very popular. So go check out their products. It's probably at your local hobby store as well. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. There's a thumb someplace on this screen and uh, I'll catch you in a future video. Many more reviews. Until then, I say bye.